This week's book reading is from a book by Alan Gibbons called The Trap. It's a powerful thriller about a family who are torn apart by terrorism and Islamophobia. This book I've been reading with one of our Year 7 students this term and it, it's been thoroughly enjoyable. What I really like about the story is it goes from the past, or the summer of 2014, to the present day. And all throughout the book it uh, changes from the past to the present, which I found really interesting. So here we go. The past. Summer 2014. There were three of them squatting uneasily on the stone littered reddish brown soil while the sun blazed down. There was no mercy in the heat of the Syrian afternoon sun. Sweat beaded on the faces of the prisoners who had their heads bowed, hands bound behind their backs. Dark emerald cypress trees stood to attention like Seville guards flanking the figure of a young gunman. He was tall and lean, his oversized combat jacket hanging loosely on his slight frame. Well, Majid, his commander chuckled. What do we do with these three? Any thoughts? Majid stared blankly at the man everybody knew as Omar. He was short and wiry with shaggy black hair and a thick untrimmed beard. There was a hidden meaning prowling behind his words. You look confused, Majid. Have you forgotten what they are doing here? Look at them. They bore arms against us. Omar kicked at their abandoned weapons and Majid instinctively raised his XM-15 semi-automatic rifle to his chest as if presenting it for inspection. What was he meant to do? Omar was still trying to prise the correct response out of his young comrade. In taking sides against the Mahajuddin of the Islamic state they have declared themselves apostates they are false muslims don't you agree majid for just a moment majid's gaze strays to his left as he examined the faces of his fellow fighters they were outwardly impassive but he could read the raw fright in their eyes he had fought alongside the captured men he saw them as comrades in a common struggle did they not turn their weapons on us majid majid remembered the sudden firefight as a messy dispute about territory, an outbreak of hostilities with no clear cause, no obvious right or wrong. He had been hoping it would be easily resolved. What was the point of brother's blood being shed in anger? One of Omar's most trusted fighters was leaning against a lone chinaberry tree, recording the scene with a handheld camcorder. Now Majid got it. This was a test. He nodded briefly. Did they not kill two of your comrades? The answer was yes. Their bodies lay barely 20 metres away, crumpled on the parched earth, eyes staring up at the sky. Then you know what to do. Majid mustered a protest. I came here to heal, not to kill my brothers. Only God can truly heal, Majid. If you want to save lives, you must do what is necessary. A man at the back of the group murmured something inaudible. Omer turned. His finger stroked the trigger of his automatic weapon. Something to say? There was no reply. Only a fool would argue with Omar. He stared at the watching fighters, eyes alive and pe with pent-up rage. Everybody knew Omar was pressing Majid's buttons, trying to get a reaction, but they didn't know why. The scene was still being recorded. Omar turned his attention back to Majid. Is there a problem? By way of reply, Majid pressed the nozzle of his rifle against the back of the first captive's head. No, no problem. He knew that to refuse Omar was to die. Majid struggled to keep his grip firm. His hand was shaking, his mind screamed, but he dared not put his thoughts into words. Majid's finger was still lingering over the trigger when something attracted his attention. A silvery gray dart in the flawless azure sky. The roar of an engine alerted the men to one of the regime's MiG-29 jet fighters. The first of the aircraft's rockets was on its way beyond before anyone could move. Flame flickered in the trail of dark smoke. There was the chatter of small arm fire and cries of Alu Akbar. Then the world exploded in smoke and fire. Like a tidal wave, a blast of raw energy swept over the landscape. 
an ear-splitting thunderclap announced a direct hit on the fighter's exposed position. The camera recording the scene continued to run. When the smoke cleared, not one man was left standing. If you'd like to uh, find out what happened uh, in the book, it's available in our school library.